Hello, and welcome to another episode of Solipsis Watched. I'm your host, The Social Solipsist, and normally I'd say this week, but in this case, a few weeks ago, I watched Game Night from 2018. I initially didn't think that I was going to bother making a video about this movie. Not every movie that I watch ends up on this channel. I try and do things that I think I have something to say about. And Game Night is not necessarily something I have a huge amount to say about, or at least that I didn't initially think that I did. Um, but in having watched a few other movies since and having some other things to reference, uh, I came back to it and considered that it probably I probably had something to say about to say about it and to talk about what it what it's indicative of in terms of the sort of industry as a whole. Uh, so, Game Night is supposed to be sort of a dark comedy of sorts um, with a crime twist, and it's an interesting premise. Uh, and I'm not going to delve too much more deeply into my feelings on it just yet. Um, the hook of the movie is something that's not unique, but it's actually pretty traditional. But I think um, it says something about a bit of a change in terms of who is writing scripts and the kind of scripts that are being written or that were being written in 2018. Um, this is a crime comedy film and it has okay writing overall, I would say. Structurally, it's got a bunch of problems, but there's some interesting and unique uh, stuff going on in it that I think makes it worth talking about. First, I think it's targeted more at a Gen X, a, an older Gen X and millennial crowd. This is a, a comedy film that's a little bit more highbrow than a lot of the sort of what I would consider generally fairly lowbrow comedy that's been made uh, in Hollywood for the last 15 years. Um, this has a structure for better or for worse it has an arc it has uh, meaningful events that happen within it. it has a continuity to it whereas i would say a lot of the comedies throughout the uh the 2000s and the 2010s really fell into sort of a pattern of we're just gonna have a uh we're gonna have a very shallow arc and most of the film is just going to be here for uh, basically a series of skits. Now, this doesn't escape that entirely, but um, it does have more of a structure and more of an intentionality to it. It still has some of that same feeling of being a little bit lowbrow, a little bit like completely turn off your brain, because if you think about this at all, you're not going to be, you're going to have too many questions or you're not going to be that happy about it. Um, but I'm happy to see that it goes in a more meaningful direction without skewing into this is like this is no longer funny or you know there's different genres of comedy films i'm a big fan of a lot of things that are satire or pastiche and this isn't really that this is a more straight comedy um with you know a, a bit of dark humor to add more of a twist because if you if you want straight comedy, you're probably just not watching a movie in the first place. Probably watching a TV show, actually, now that I think about it. There's a lot of a lot more just straight comedy TV shows. It's the evolution of the uh, the sitcom out of its 90s and 2000s sitcominess. Anyway, I'm getting distracted. The movie is interesting because it has an actual setting to start with. And, and like I said, it's targeted at a slightly older, slightly more mature, but not particularly mature audience um and it's talking about like people in their 30s and 40s and the thing that like couples of a certain age uh might be doing as 
recreational activity. So it's it's all surrounded. Uh, it, it, the the whole thing, the hook of the whole thing, is the idea of a game night. You go out with friends, or or you go to a friend's house, or or couples' houses, or whatever, um, and you get a bunch of friends around, and you just play some some board games or card games or whatever. Um, and it has a lot of commentary about what um, what uh, like adult relationships can look like. Um, and it is self-aware enough to recognize that if it just painted everybody as like happy couples, that would be silly. Um, and but also that if they just made everybody completely dysfunctional, that would be a different pitfall. And it manages not to do that either. Obviously, for the sake of um, having some intrigue, uh, like all of the individuals and all of the couples have enough conflict to make them, a little bit more interesting, a little bit more compelling on their own. Um, but it manages to not uh, fall into the problem of let's just set these players up to knock all of them down, um, which is very commonly like playing playing characters as basically set pieces for harsh comedy is, I think, a, a common a common choice that I don't think works very well and tends to not be very compelling and also undercut, you know, any meaningful, um, growth you might see in character. Um, so it manages to get away from that. The overall arc is very silly. It's basically the idea of a game night that gets out of hand. Um, and if you think about the actual plot as it's being revealed to you too much, it very quickly falls apart. This is not a true mystery of any kind this is not something you're like this is this doesn't have a lot of intrigue going on you're not really that curious everything's pretty directly delivered um compared to something like um oh man i can't i can't remember the um can't remember the name of the uh the movie now the other movie i'm not gonna go scroll through the list um uh, the one with the the bride and the family that we watched maybe a year ago now, um, but anyway, the 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 like hunting one, um, it's not quite to that level of like having in, having a familial intrigue and like genuine mystery uh, and those sorts of things, um, but it gives you just enough to keep you intrigued. There's. Do I, I, I need to talk about the ending of the movie, but I'm not going to get there just yet. Um, production wise, it's okay. This is not your typical comedy where it's shot. Uh, it's not your typical comedy shooting where everything is very flat lit and all that. Um, it goes a little bit darker, both figuratively and literally, where um there it's the evening most of the settings are either outdoors at night or indoors in with like some complex not mood lighting but like some some naturalistic lighting looks um and so visually it's not particularly compelling but at least it's different and it looks competently shot um as far as the the like cinematography goes there's not a lot positive or negative to say again it's like it's not ugly for the most part there are a few um more fast-paced scenes that suffer some of the like action movie hollywood sins that are common or have been common for quite a while now um but they're not so egregious that they're particularly bothersome there is one particular thing that I did enjoy that probably nobody's going to care about or very few people will care about but me, but there are a couple of shots in the film, mostly in transitionary scenes, where they use um, what's called uh, tilt shift photography, which is this very specialized lens that is used for, it, it basically makes everything look like miniatures. This is something that I wish was played up a little bit more narratively the idea that they are in a game um that's not a spoiler or anything they're not literally in a game um but the idea that like you're supposed to be remembering that game night has then has become the whole world to them not that uh, game night is just what you know happens at the dinner table after dinner's done um 
And so they use this tilt shift photography, which is a typical, or it's not seen very often, especially in Hollywood, but it's, a, it's pretty uncommonly used um, photography style in the first place um, because it has this effect of making very blurry backgrounds and everything looking very small. Um, it's hard to describe. It, I, I, it's it's hard to describe if you don't see it already. And it's hard to describe because I'm not that technically uh, apt at at under, at describing what it visually looks like. But um, if you see it, you'll know what I mean. Uh, and I, if you're curious about that at all, I highly recommend uh, you look it up on Wikipedia or something. Even just understand. Oh, well, I'm a huge nerd, so I just like how the physics of the lens they use to shoot it, uh, how that operates and why that effect comes out of it. Anyway, I'm digressing again. I really like there's a few shots that they use that and I think it's of note. Um, beyond that, like, there aren't a lot of really standout um, effects. There's not a lot of standout photography. The, like, sets and, and locations are adequate. Um, for the most part and serve their purpose and aren't distracting too much. Uh, and most of the acting is just kind of okay. Um, Jason Bateman, I don't love or hate. I think he's fine. I think he's great in uh, Arrested Development, but that's sort of made for him. Um, and in a lot of other things, he just sort of plays Jason Bateman. Um, this is an effect that I, I've talked about before. There's a lot of actors and actresses that just sort of play their one character. They just play them with slight variations. And J Jason Bateman's one of those people. Um, that is true of most of the people that are cast in this, um, major or minor. And they all put on a, a, a reasonable performance. Um, the one standout, though, I do want to do say is Jesse Plemons, um, who plays a neighbor. Uh, he is, I think, an underrated actor. Um, I don't think he's been in anything we've watched for the channel, uh, but like every time I see him, I know I'm going to get a, a pretty solid performance, and he has a lot of range that he doesn't get to show off that much. Um, that said, if this is the only thing you ever saw him in, you might think that like this is... The, the, he, he plays a very kind of very flat and very specific kind of character but like I love what they did with him uh, in in the in this movie and I think his performance is really excellent um, even when it's very understated uh, I need to talk about the ending of the film and I'm not gonna spoil exactly what happens but um, I am going to talk a little bit about like structurally what's wrong with it. So if you're really interested in this, I think it's okay if you're just willing to turn off your brain and, and watch it for, you know, an hour and a half or whatever. Uh, it's, it's reasonably well paced enough that you won't probably won't regret it. Now let's talk about the structure of the movie and its ending and why I have problems with it. This movie tries to do too much. It is a simple premise that uh, has a lot of ways it could play out. And for the most part, I like the idea, the ideas they had about how it should play out. However, it goes too hard. It is, they should have narrowed the scope of it, I think, pretty substantially. This comes into focus within the first half hour of the movie. Because there are a couple of scenes, and it escalates as the movie goes on, where the scenes just get progressively more, I don't want to say silly, but they it's just like, this scene makes no sense the second you think about it. Why would this play out like this? Why wouldn't this character do this? Why is any, any of this not... Has, why, there's so many opportunities once you know how this plays out for the movie to have just ended at some point, but it doesn't. And the characters unfortunately suffer for that because that largely means they look stupid. They look extra dumb and unaware because the only way the movie can continue is if they are extra dumb and unaware. And part of that is because the stakes are bizarrely high. Um, like they escalate out of control and the proportional the responses that the characters have are not exactly proportional 
Now this escalates all the way up to, I want to say about like three quarters to like it, like 20 minutes before the end of the film thereabouts, I think. Uh, and there is an ending th there is an ending there and it appears to be a, a, a real ending. And the, the ending that is there actually works really well. Uh, they could tighten it up a, a little bit in the in the earlier scenes and extend some scenes a little bit more to play into this to into this ending but unfortunately it's not the real ending the real ending is 20 minutes later and it's a lot less interesting and a lot less compelling and a lot less satisfying because it go instead of throwing away the like escalation that happens as a result of everybody getting like a little bit too too into things and th overthinking stuff and just playing everything at 11 um they instead of making that the joke instead of the ending being the joke where everybody comes together and goes whoa that got out of hand they play it straight and they go nope it really is that ridiculous and that undercuts the ending or the the ending that could be so much and elevates the stakes to a point where the whole thing is kind of unsatisfying and silly and the last 20 minutes involve the characters largely doing things that don't make any sense in the first place let alone for the characters as they've defined themselves in the rest of the movie so it kind of it doesn't work so great it's 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 a little disappointing in that respect it doesn't ruin the movie entirely but again part of the reason i wasn't going to make a, uh, a video about this in the first place is because that bad ending kind of hits so hard and really sours the rest of it at least it did on my first viewing of it it i'm coming around on the whole thing and like i i would sort of just like to cut the movie i'm just gonna if i ever watch this again which i probably won't but if i ever watch it again i would probably just cut it off at that point it has too many problems to have that be a clean break. Um, like, it just leaves too many things unanswered. But, like, I, I, I just don't care about the last, like, 10, 15, 20 minutes. So, anyway, uh, that's... It, it just goes a little too... It does a little too much. It's still interesting. And um, I, with movies I'm going to talk about in the next couple of weeks, probably... I think there are some frames of reference that are relevant. Uh, I, I apologize for the noise outside if you can hear that. Um, so I, I'm, I'm hopeful that this is at least indicative that there is some slightly smarter writing going on um, and that comedy movies are not dead and might just still be in a growing pains evolution that's going on. So, yeah, we'll see. Anyway, thank you guys for watching another episode of Solipsis Watched. I've been the Social Solipsist, and I'll see you guys next time.